Arthur Sewell, a blind war veteran of Baltimore, has a most unusual occupation. He acts as a guide for sightseers visiting famous old Fort McHenry, from whose ramparts, in the dawn's early light, flew the stars and stripes that inspired Francis Scott Key's immortal anthem back in 1814. Sewell also is guide and custodian of the Flag House, a national shrine with its historic exhibits of early American men of war and other interesting displays. For it was in this house that the victory flag flown on Fort McHenry was made. There's a facsimile of Key's original manuscript of the Star Spangled Banner. It was in this very room that Mary Pickersgill and her daughter Carolyn made the famous flag. And here are many of the Pickersgill family relics, just as they were during the War of 1812, guarded and cherished by a man who can never see them, but who knows just where they are and the intimate history of each. Fine old pottery in China, each one a relic of great value, and among them, the Pickersgill tea set. The famous flag-making scene has been immortalized in a striking painting on exhibition here. A flag, strangely enough, with 15 stars and 15 stripes, although there were 18 states at the time. One of the oddities of history. Did you ever see an automobile or bus run on charcoal? The charcoal is burned in a special retort or firebox at the back of the bus, and the gas coming from it is used as the fuel for an ordinary gasoline engine. In an effort to make the nation independent of foreign gasoline sources, Japan has developed charcoal buses and cars to an amazing extent. The gas must be cooled before it is used. Then it is piped into the regular automobile carburetor. And that's all there is to it. Girls will be girls even when they are bus conductors in Tokyo. More than one-third of Tokyo's buses now run on charcoal gas. They get about two-thirds of a mile per pound of charcoal. It's not quite as cheap as gasoline, but Japan's charcoal supply is unlimited. An extra can of charcoal is carried by the driver as a refill. The bus uses about 120 pounds a day. Think of it. Buses run by charcoal. It's stranger than fiction. What is more useless than a woman's stocking after it has run its course? Mrs. Carolyn Goldsmith of Milford, Connecticut, however, paints a different picture. She has developed a new art, stocking painting, she calls it, the weaving in burlap of a new kind of tapestry or wall decoration from bits of discarded hosiery. It is similar to the making of a hooked rug, only Mrs. Goldsmith blends her colors and shades with an artist's care. The result is a remarkable reproduction in silk. This design is a stocking painting of Harkness Tower at Yale. And certainly, so many feminine stockings never went into Harkness Tower before, even during junior prom at Yale. A sort of bar relief, the French might call it. Mrs. Goldsmith also has made a striking reproduction of the Memorial Bridge Tower at Milford, but she considers the Harkness Tower picture her masterpiece. Hereafter, girls, when your stocking develops a run, don't get sore. Try and imitate Mrs. Goldsmith. But don't forget, it's a tricky job. Have you ever wondered what kind of a house an architect would design for himself? Millard R. Warren, an architect of Knoxville, Tennessee, as a home that includes several very unusual features. It's a cinder block house with no wood to rot and with concrete tile floors and cinder block walls painted instead of plastered. 
all according to Warren's own specifications. The strangest part of all, however, is the roof, which, as you see, is covered with three inches of water. The roof proper is made of a pitch, felt, and gravel composition. Not only does the water preserve this composition, but it keeps the house cool in summer by evaporation and by reflecting the sun's rays. Well, it all sounds like a good idea, but suppose the roof should spring a leak. There, without a doubt, is the strangest tree in the world. It's a species of rubber tree on the estate of E.P. Davis at Carl Gables, Florida. Note the curious aerial roots that entwine the tree well above the ground. What makes the tree famous, however, is the fact that it pumps water. Imagine a tree that has turned itself into an artesian well. The water runs from a crotch of the tree about shoulder high. Pure fresh water at the rate of 100 gallons a day. Geologists think that the tree's roots have tapped a spring many feet below the surface of the ground. The water forces its way upward, helped in part by a split in the interior of the tree caused by a hurricane several years ago. Cool drinking water from the branches of an artesian tree where nature was her own well digger. It's stranger than fiction. Alan F. Kitchell, Jr., a New York writer, finds relaxation from long hours at the typewriter by making model airplanes. Kitchell became air-minded while in college, but the acquisition of a family grounded him before he became a full-fledged pilot. Now, by means of research and model plane construction, he is fast becoming an expert on war planes of the First World War. With meticulous care, he is constructing models of the various types of air fighters used from 1914 to 1918. Each little plane, a faithful replica of its prototype. The finishing touches to a British Vickers gun bus of 1916. A British Handley Page bomber. Next, a French observation plane. Two famous enemies, Rick Toffin Sparker and Rickenbacker Spa. And now a Curtis Jenny, famous American training plane. Kitchell says it will take him at least 10 years to finish a complete set of World War models. When that is done, he expects to start on the new World War types.